It's time for another Dice Tower review with the Chief, Bart Brunchine. Hey, this is the Chief from the Dice Tower. Today we're going to talk about Sales of Glory. I will not pronounce these gentlemen's names right, so they are Andrea Angiolino and Andrea Menanini. Sorry, gentlemen. Horrible. Um, it's a uh, kind of a prototype game that was just uh, mailed off to me. Um, they've done a Kickstarter. The ships I have just come on these little cards. I'll be going in so you'll get a closer look at these, but again, kind of prototype. If you've seen the Kickstarter or BGG, they've got these beautifully rendered um, uh, little wooden ships that just look great. So, um, of, of course, uh, this is in line with the uh, the new Star Wars TIE Fighter X-Wing game and um, Wings of War series, I believe is what it was. So, um, that, their names shifted a couple times. But think of that. This is going to be a miniatures game, um, a heavy simulation that has some very unique components in terms of cards, so it really minimizes your record keeping, which is key, at least for me. And let's go in and we'll take a little bit of a closer look. In all sailing type combat situations, the wind is key. It's the total key to your maneuverability. I don't have a weather vane, so I've got a cheese cleaver with a napkin holder, but it's going to serve as my weather vane. All right, the key I wanted to show here is if you look around the borders of the card itself, you'll see I've got a red border directly to the front of the ship, orange, green coming around, orange directly to the rear of the ship, and then green and orange again. And they're slightly different for both ships. Again, if you uh, see here, I've got a long orange area where I've got a little bit more red coming down the side and then the orange here. The card in and of itself is able to show the uh, maneuverability it has in terms of how it's tacking to the wind. I'll show you the gist of how the wind works in terms of the color coordination with the card. First of all, each ship has its own deck. Um, in this case, we're gonna be using uh, maneuver deck A. I'm gonna get in and show you those in a second, but I wanted to show you how this will affect your movement. If the wind is coming out of this area, I would be in the orange, and it means I'm not gonna be nearly as maneuverable. My most speedy maneuverable area is green. And tr very true to historic sense, the ships of the time did not want the wind directly off their stern. They always wanted it coming kind of off of their, their quarter a little bit. And you can see that modeled perfectly here. And I love this aspect of Sails of Glory. Um, when I pull out the cards, you're going to see that green and orange ships will be um, modeled by little arrows on the cards. Um, and same goes for if the wind's directly in front of you, it's actually going to back your ship and really mess up your movement. But you can pivot quickly. All right, I've got two examples here of uh, a sweeping movement to the left and one to the right. Um, first of all, in the basic game, you're only going to be using uh, the battle sails. But advanced game, you can uh, just shorten your sails or you can use all full sails and you can see how you're going to get much more distance and maneuverability out of your sails. Second of all is uh, now you can see the orange and the green. So again, if uh, the wind is coming in on the green portion of the card or the orange portion, you can see how this is going to affect um, where my final ship placement is going to be. Same here as if uh, we're dealing with the red. So if I've got the wind coming right off the front of my ship, it's actually going to back me up and slow me down. So just to show how this works, uh, you've got this little uh, kind of marker on the front of your ship. Let's assume the wind was just off of my um, stern area and the green, and this is the card I had played for my movement. I'm going to be placing that right in front. We'll assume I'm on the basic game and I've just got middle uh, battle sails going. And I'm just gonna move my ship so that it comes up and lines up with that green arrow. And you can see now my ship's progressed through the movement. Now, if I'd been in the orange area, I would have been 
right there. And so you can just see how my movement is affected by the cards I choose and the wind element and my direction or orientation to the wind. And if the wind was coming right at my ship, I would be forced to uh, use this card where I'm going to back up basically and then reposition right along that red arrow. And then this would come out and you can see how that would reposition me there. Uh, the cards are great. Like I said, the idea that a ship gets a certain maneuver deck of cards and then I can use whatever cards I want to within that deck as long as I'm following uh, kind of the weather vane in terms of where the wind is. You know, I've got this huge deck of cards that just says all these different kinds of maneuver actions and I can freely choose these. So I'm choosing how I'm going to maneuver, sorry about my glare, and, and then simply adjusting to whatever the wind is. All right, I want to show the firing arcs. You'll see on here that uh, if an enemy ship is within this arc, it'll give you a full broadside, which means you're going to do more damage. Um, the fore and aft guns, you can just see they've got a little bit more of a sweeping range and they do almost look identical, but let me show you. Um, this system does allow for different ships to model the differences in their guns and the range they could fire, at least the angles they could fire. In order to determine range, you simply take a range marker. Um, I should have it the other way, but here. If you are in range A, you're going to be in long range, and you're going to have a, a cup full of uh, chits that you'll draw for long range, which are going to be a lot more misses. You'll also have uh, cups which each of the different chits in it, B, and then you'll have one for chain shot, uh, one for grape shot, and even on the reverse you're going to have uh, musketry. And each you'll have cups with chips for each one of these different ranges or different types of ammunition. But just to show you how it'll work, you'll simply line up your guns and you'll see um, I am in my full broadside range and you can see I'm at long range. So had we been in a little bit here and I'm going to zoom in, you can see I'm now as long as my uh, card is hitting as soon as I get into this area on the ship you can see I've moved into a short range. So that's as simple as this gets. Now dealing with uh, chain shot or double shot or grape shot, I would have had to been an even tighter range. And if we're talking about my, uh, my little Marines that are up in the rigging, you can see I would have had to been even closer shot. I'm gonna do just a quick and general description of the player card. Uh, first you can see this is your maneuver deck that you're gonna be using. Um, this is the amount of damage the ship will take for each boxed area. The 464 is what damage I would do to the opposing ship if I hit it. The full broadside would be six. Um, let's just assume I'm fighting the Courageous. Um, his full damage is a 232. Let's assume he got a full broadside on me. I would reach in, it's a long range shot, and I would just blindly pull out three chits um, from the cup. Let's assume there was no more action taken. I would roll these over. Um, the zero is not going to do any damage, and this zero is not going to do any damage. This would be applied to the very first box. I can take up to five damage in this box. Once I've reached five, these will be flipped over, and I'm now moving down my chart in terms of the damage my ship is taking. You can see the next box is 464, but then it's a 354 then a 353, a 343, so my ship is getting weaker and weaker and weaker as it takes damage. Um, same deal as I lose crew, I'm going to have a harder and harder time of uh, repairing damage or loading my guns and everything's handled right on here. There's several different things on here in terms of if your guns are loaded, your broadsides, what they're loaded with and more the advanced rules. Um, this game will model chain shot, which was used to take out the rigging of the opponents, grape shot, which was used to uh, damage the crew. But 
the skill is in when you load these cannons with that type of ammunition, you might find yourself in a maneuver situation where you wished you'd had them loaded differently. And at that point in time, you either fire what you got or you got to go through a process of unloading them and unloading them with what you want and then still trying to maintain your position. That's it. Very brief uh, description. And these are all, again, um, prototype copies. Now, I've done some other uh, videos in terms of ship-to-ship -ship combat. And again, I want to show you crossing the T. Um, with this uh, system, you can see that the ship that's uh, got a, uh, you know, the French vessel is unable to fire on the ship that's directly in front of him. Um, now, he may be able to fire as the ship continues its movement, but this fella here has got a full on um, broadside and he's just going to be able to pummel the French ship. Wooden ship combat is all about maneuverability. Some people don't like wooden ship combat for that reason, um, but if you can learn to master the wind, and this system really helps you understand how to do that, um, and adjust to the other ship to try to line up that perfectly timed shot um, when your cannons are loaded with the right type of ammunition, you're off and running. This, I believe, will be, well, we'll save it for the final comments. We're back. Uh, in conclusion, uh, my favorite thing about uh, this game is the way they've worked in the color coordination um, with the direction that the wind is blowing and what way your ship is tacking into the wind. It's kind of a hard thing to sometimes deal with in a simulation game uh, with sailing vessels. This system works beautifully and just at a glance you can see you know how well trimmed your ship is or how heavy it is or how well it can take advantage of the wind and the use of the cards and the fact that you simply pick the card you want choose your movement display it set it down move your ship perfect um, keeps record keeping down to a minimum uh, this is a simulation game uh, and inside that it's a sailing wooden ships simulation game there's really the main thing is maneuver and planning how you're gonna load your guns and uh, getting that maneuver to pair in right with how your guns are loaded and being at the proper range, which is really what I love about it. Uh, I used to love the Hornblower series and this captures that. And because of the Hornblower series, I've always had an attraction to the Napoleonic uh, wooden ship warfare um, you know, genre. Um, and these miniatures, even though I don't have them here, the ones I've seen on Kickstarter, BGG, gorgeous. So I can tell you, if you're not a fan of simulations or wooden ship sailing Napoleonic combat, you're probably not gonna like this. However, if you've ever even thought about trying one out, this system's key. This system's sweet, it's simple, um, it's intuitive, uh, it's easy to pick up with the eye, everything looks gorgeous. And uh, it really just makes sense without a whole lot of record keeping. And uh, I haven't seen a better system. I love this concept. So there you go. See you guys. Chief. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>